blur. Uh, let's see, I was interested in the moon. What is it really? A base, a viewing station? Well, Naomi Riber or Reber, I have never been to the moon, but I have a deep suspicion that many of our our oldest records in the world that were describing astronomical phenomena never mentioned the moon. The moon was very late. Uh, in a pre-literate period, just before writing exploded across the third millennium BC, there were several records that were preserved about astronomy, and they're just not. There's no mention of the moon. The moon is very late in uh, coming. Uh, I personally believe it was 4039 BC in the month of May that the moon appeared, but that, I, I believe that for for reasons that are in my Luna files and in, in my Phoenix series videos. Uh, I believe the moon came from the same system that Earth came from. I believe 100% in the Teichus Bode theory, that which shows a mathematical distribution of the planets from the surface of the sun, which shows that Mars, if you if you take the distance from Mercury to the sun and multiply it by three, it is where you find Venus. And if you continue that formula all the way to Neptune, it stays true. The only problem is Earth isn't in that formula. Earth is an intruder. And this is why the intruder worlds come so close to us all the time. Phoenix, the Nemesis X object, uh, our lunar body, the moon, which is a dead world, raped of its atmosphere, raped, raped of its, its, its outer, uh, uh, basically, basically it's it, topography, totally rip, ripped away into space. In whatever space is, because you have to understand, I am a simulationist. I believe that all this is simulated. I believe that we are living in a universe that is an actual copy of a real universe and that somebody, maybe humans, are trying to figure out something. And that's why all this is going on. So, the moon the moon is very unique. Uh, I do know that the Russians and, and verified by the Americans in the 1950s and 60s were studying their telescopes on the moon and it was noticed that many craters, Marilunai, I can't remember all the names of them, but many craters in the moon were opening an iris, it's like an iris, an iris type door that would open and black dots were seen coming in and going in and out. Not, not white light, black dots were seen going in and out in the light behind, inside the iris when, it, when, the, when, the, when these doors, blast doors, whatever they are, that were hidden in craters opened. It was a blue light, blue illumination on the inside. Very well documented, very well documented. You probably Google it and come up a bunch, bunch of stuff. Now you have to understand, about 95% of all the data that I have ever divulged to you on my channel came from old books, came from, you know, even like, uh, hold on, I got to turn this off. Yeah, my, my AC unit, my AC unit will totally drown me out. But like this 1953 edition of Webster's New World Dictionary, I read very old books. It's a uh, Many of the things that I have researched and recorded in Chronicon, I can't find any reference to on the internet. But I find them in pre-World War II books all the time. And I, I, I've beaten this issue up. I've, I, I've mentioned this in my videos many times. It's a... Uh, uh, our histories are being scrubbed. And the internet has, is a fascinating, awesome source for real-time information and some historical information. But there's just not a lot there. I mean, even guys like... Hans Horberger in 1901, 1902, and 1903 that were releasing books about the origin of the moon and how our, our most distant ancestors never knew about it. It was something new that it appeared. Uh, even his material has been has been completely edited out. I don't know who's buying up all these old books and destroying them. They're just almost hard, difficult. They're very difficult to find. Uh, so many editions were printed of many of the classical books and, and the, the scientific reports and books like from the Source Book Project. Uh, a whole series of reports from the last scientific reports from the last 300 years, and I don't. I, I look for them. I try to find vendors who are selling these old books. Because I, I don't know. Some. I I halfway want to believe, although I have no no evidence other than suspicion, that somebody, some rich billionaires or something, are buying up everything they can of these old books, and they're making sure they're going to incinerators. It's just it doesn't make any sense. We should have old libraries everywhere that have preserved these books. Literature and the preservation of, of, of paper physical knowledge with, cha with chains of custody going, certificates crammed into the papers. This was, this was, a, very, uh, it was a very prominent practice for at least 3,000 years. And in the Middle Ages, you couldn't just share a book. You had to show the chain of custody. You had to show certificates and letters, letters from court marquees. You had to show all this that, showed, that demonstrated, man, that this book is not fictitious. It wasn't just a, a written. And even a translation from like French to German had to come with some authenticities. And we're not finding that anymore. The internet has completely, completely erased whole, whole, 
whole eons of our history because it's just not mentioned. And when 99.9% of the world is now getting all their information from this venue, but this venue has completely edited out by omission, then, of course, then it's just like a computer program. Every single author on this planet is putting out material, but their output is corrupted. It has to be corrupted because their input wasn't, wasn't, wasn't intact. So those of you who are, who, I mean, those of you who follow computer coding and from program, believe me, you understand what I'm saying. If there is a slight error in your input, your output will, can, can be disastrously off. It is the same way with history. It's the same way with the acquisition of data and data sets. And especially, like, my specialty is chronology. And I didn't, didn't start out that way. I was just very interested. I mean, I started off as a Southern Baptist Christian. I wanted to know everything about the, what, what we had in the secular history and the archaeological monographs. I wanted to know what would confirm the Bible and what wouldn't. Unfortunately, uh, I, I mean, first 40 years of my life, I read that Bible back and forth. I have the notes to prove it, and I just can't. I just can't stand by it anymore. I just, um, I really offended a lot of my Christian listeners, and and uh, uh, I, I have been attacked vehemently. Any of you can go to my to my Amazon, and you will see I'm not selling any books. Although I have some reviews on each of my books, where people are saying, "Oh my God, this is astounding! I have never seen anybody put all these series of facts together. The bibliographies are fantastic. Oh my God, there's a thousand sources in this book. How come people don't know this guy?" You will see those type of reviews on my books on Amazon, but equally, you will also see some very venomous, vehement attacks. I don't know who these people are. I don't even know. I mean, according to Amazon, they've purchased a book because they're verified. It's a verified. These are verified reviews. But oh my God, the venom that's in some of those uh, deals. It completely killed my sales. I sell no books no more. I don't even look forward to the Amazon royalty checks no more. I have eight published nonfiction books. On, so I don't make any sales. And you know what? It really doesn't bother me. I'm not worried about any of these little, these little minutia in my life. I don't really care. Money, money doesn't move me. It's, uh, it's just not something I spent entirely too much time on the moon. Uh, I do know that Matthew Devereaux on the Facebook group published a lot of my articles. If you were to, uh, go on that group and just, I guess you use a search bar. I'm not on Facebook. I guess you use a search bar because so other people have told me how they found a lot of my stuff. You use a search bar and, and look up the moon. It's going to pull up all the stuff. Cause I know I've, I've given that man box after box after box. He's my backup in the event that anything ever happens to me. That man has copies of all of my research, every single thing. And, uh, even backups on flash drives, handwritten notes from prison, uh, whole charts I haven't even released yet. Uh, I am a perfectionist, and, and that is a fault because it keeps me from moving forward and doing and, and, and progressing and keeps me from doing a lot of things because I'm so self-critical, and I don't like to release things until I'm absolutely satisfied. And by that time, people have either lost interest or they have moved on. It's just, uh, it, is, it has been, it's been, it's, it's, it's been one, of my, one of my flaws, no doubt. I don't have to be too perfect. Uh, maybe, maybe it's I don't know some some embedded uh, psychosocial. Uh, I don't know. It, it's a character flaw. It's what it is. Could be from insecurities. I don't know. I just have to have. It has to meet my standard before I can release it for others to review. And my standard is kind of high. I, I still have unpublished books that I'm not. I mean, I my website shows several unpublished books I haven't even released yet. Yeah, I'll get around to it. The moon is very interesting. But if you really want to know, Naomi, about the moon, you're going to have to take things into consideration. They're going to disturb you. And one of them is the lunar wave theory. You cannot have any appreciation for an identity of that object in the sky without first entertaining things and anomalies like lunar wave theory. Lunar wave theory is very real. Yes, many people try to debunk it. Many people are talking about it, but they do that about every truth. So just use your own discernment. I believe it's a hologram hiding something else. I also believe that there's a weapon in the sky that is that is very well hidden, but I don't believe it's the moon. I believe the moon is observing us. Uh, how the moon moves, how the it's just it's like a giant observatory, and it might not be one in the physical sense. Uh, we live in a simulation, so when we talk about physical things, it's it it can be confusing because they're physical to us only because we're jacked by the central nervous system into this simulacrum that makes us believe we see, we hear, we smell, we touch, we taste. But it's all deceitful. 
we are just as real as the things around us, but when, but when we scrutinize them, they basically resolve into oscillating fields.